Hello and welcome back to Evening Rust. I'm Edouard Monterey and this is the show where we go into coding game and we learn Rust and solve some interesting problems. I'm glad for you to join us and I think this is, I forgot, lost count. I think this is our fifth or sixth show now. Um, on every, not every day, every, three times a night, week probably. And we're going to keep going today. We'll see where we left off last time and I'll talk about a little bit what I'm doing as I set up. For all the new people joining us, hello, glad to have you here. And without too much delay, let's look at where we are. So close this down and so we're off in this site called Coding Game and what we did last time, the last thing we solved was this little Minesweeper problem. And Minesweeper it took me quite a long time to get through this. Some of it was a bit of rust issues, but we cleaned up our rust in the end a little bit. And this is the basic rust you have, if we show the test cases, you have the map of Minesweeper and you had to figure out where the mines were. We had to use a few tricks, but it was okay. <clears throat> but more importantly, what we have is, we wrote a bunch of standardized code like this matrix here. And what I wanted to do now is because one of our viewers last time had the very good point that if we just keep following the puzzles here, there's several aspects of Rust we won't really get exposed to what I will do is I copied this out to Minesweeper RS and I'm going to start making a library out of this and recopying it so that when we get to these new <coughs> to these new uh, challenges we can start reusing the code for example matrix we can reuse it's not a template yet or whatever Rust calls them a parametric and but we'll start adding to it because it comes up a lot and we might replace these macros with proper functions if we know how um, somehow it might be possible then we'll also just start adding more functions and we'll start doing this in a cleaner fashion so we'll focus on clean rust more than we will in the solution fast which so far we can't really get it fast anyways so again <clears throat> this is evening rust where we play rust play coding game with rust and let's go to the practice to get warmed up, I thought, before we get into one of the ones, I want to just get through one of these earlier ones, just get it out of the way. There's no graphics to it, so let's just uh, try and do defibrillators quickly. I don't know what this one is. We're going to jump into the solvents. And we're hoping this will be fast, because what we want to do is move on to the Morgan test cases. So what we have is the city of Montpellier has equipped its streets with defibrillators to help save victims of cardiac arrest. Common enough there, I guess. The data corresponding to the position of all defibrillators is available online. Based on the data we provide in the tests, write a program that will allow the users to find the defibrillator nearest the location using their mobile phone. Okay. Uh, everything we have in text format, the decimal numbers are comma. Okay, and I'm not sure what we're supposed to do with that. Distance between two points. <clears throat> um, well, this is just weird. <laughs> okay, so what do we have to do? Description of each defibrillator. Users longitude, users latitude, the number of defibrillators, a description of each defibrillator, the name of the defibrillator. Okay, and what's, uh, what is the what is the description of each defibrillator? Again, okay, I guess it has longitude and latitude. Doesn't really say it very well here. Well, this one's kind of annoying because it doesn't have the fun stuff in it. And its parsing is incomplete. We'd have to focus on that. I'm not sure if we should do this one. Let's just. It's a simple sorting one, so let's come back to it after. I want to go back to one. I thought it would be simpler, but because they don't have the parsing done, I don't want to learn Rust just on that one yet, how to parse those colons. So let's just go down to one, see if we have one with actual graphics. Those are actually more fun to start with. Teeds, memoization and graphs, that always sounds good. No graphics. I wish they had a sort option by graphics so we can just find it, what we're doing it. And to start, Conway sequence. What is this? Is that graphics? New graphics. Oh, I'd love to have the fun with graphics. I should look for these before the show from now on to actually find one where there's an actual graphic. Still no graphic. They totally got us excited. 
No graphics. Sorry, I usually I start one, but um, we might have to pick one without graphics. This one also has nothing. Um, try. We only have one left here. I think we have Bender. Well, I don't have another graphics, so let's play with Bender instead. <clears throat> has a community success rate of 64%, so we'll see how we can do on this. We don't have graphics, we might as well start with the easy ones then, but we'll just go to here then. And we have to parse to play two-dimensional arrays that are basis for 2D problems. Makes sense. You have to implement simple but finite state machine and learn about this concept. We're good enough for that. We're going to help Bender go through the city. Bender, depressed since its artificial intelligence has been diminished, roams on the streets to find the nearest suicide booth. In order to save the robot, you are entrusted with the task of forecasting the path Bender will take so we can intercept him. You will have at your disposal the logic of the robot's displacements. What are you still doing here? Run to Bender's rescue. So there's an episode 2 and episode 3. And I guess they get harder. And, oh wow. <laughs> That's a lot of rules on this one. Um, I guess we just have to figure out where he is, though. <clears throat> we have the nine rules. Bender starts in the place indicated at. Bender finishes a journey and dies when he reaches a soup. So by Mark's dollar sign. Good enough. Obstacles that Bender may encounter are a hash or an X. When Bender encounters an obstacle, he changes direction using the following priorities. South, east, north, and west. So he first tries to go south. If he cannot, then he will go east. If he cannot, north, and finally, okay. Along the way, Bender may come across path modifiers so will instantly make him change direction. The S modifier will make him take south from then on, E to the east, N to the north, and W to the west. I don't know. I mean, that's a. I don't know if that's a permanent change direction, but we're going to find out. Along the way, Bender may come across path modifiers on this one. The circuit inverters produce a magnetic field which will reverse the direction priorities that Bender should choose when encountering an obstacle. Priorities will become west, north, east. Okay. Regional state, so it flip-flops the state. Bender can also find a few beers along his path, B on the map, that will give him strength and put him in breaker mode. Breaker mode allows Bender to destroy and automatically pass through obstacles presented by the character X. Only the obstacles X. Only the obstacles X, okay. When an obstacle is destroyed, it remains so permanently, and Ben Dana maintains his course of direction. If Bender is in breaker mode and passes over a beer again, then he immediately goes out, out of breaker mode. The beers remain in place after Bender has passed. So the beers never go away, and we have obstacles in this path. Two teleporters, T, may be in the city. If Bender passes over a teleporter, then he is automatically teleported to the position of the other teleporter and retains his direction and breaker mode properties. Finally, the space character are blank areas on the map, so no special behavior other than those specified above. So this implied he keeps moving in the same direction, I guess? And heads south, okay. Question mark, he, uh, hash he can't go through, I guess. Fender cannot reach a suicide booth because he's indefinitely looping. Then your program must only display the loop. Why would he be infinitely looping? That one I think we're going to have to figure out because there's a couple, there's, like, there's several states in here. And <clears throat> basically we had to keep track of the state he was at before. And let's do this correctly and last this time. Oops, I dropped something. Let's actually parse these into enums. And we'll figure out how to do an enum. I haven't done these yet. Anybody know how to do an enum in Rust? We're going to do an enum. Uh, however you do enum. Let's see if there's an enum. Okay, I don't think that's it. That's enumerate. Um, so let's just take a quick Rust enum. Rust enum. There's some Rust enum. They should just go automatically to the second page. Enum. So we have enum and we just give it types. I think this problem is not actually as long as we think. We should get through it. It sounds very straightforward. Um, I just want to try enums though. Hi, Nkoyan, and hi, Sasha. Both of you. <coughs> uh, let's try enums. 
Here we go, enum IP4 kind. I'm going to tick this one up here. Enum, we're going to say, what are we going to call these? What do we call the three inches in the map? Um, let's call it cell type. So, oh no, cell type. We're going to use their naming convention. Do they have a consistent, they have weird naming conventions. Their docs switch between different ones. Many rules and scenarios. That's okay. Not that many. We'll get through it. I think we're okay in this time. So what obstacles do we have? We have a start location. We have a suicide booth. <laughs> Delayed high, thank you. And we have directions. So we have direction. Let's list them in order. South, east, north, west. And Okay, so we have a generic obstacle. Let's just say obstacle. And we have two types of obstacles. Obstacle hard and obstacle soft. And that's based on that. And circuit inverter, so we have an inverter as well. So there's lots of types. The parsing is going to take a little bit of time, but that's okay. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to parse this map and then print it out again so we actually see it. And we might have a beer. The map doesn't change the beer. Except we, they just. It's okay, so it break it. She has a beer. Two teleporters. Teleporter. It's always two of them. Two times. It's always going to be one times. I don't know how many times this is. The rest of these we don't know, but the map we don't know if it's blocked by obstacles either. <coughs> Inverter, any number of those. And these can be destroyed. And now we're going to go back. We need a, well, we're going to say a bender state first. Bender state. And bender will have a location. So it has a current location. It's going to be an I32. And, and he has two Boolean values. Is he inverted? Inverted bool. Is he in breaker mode? Bool. Okay. Now there's a slight ordering thing we have to do is that does the state change when he arrives at the square and then he leaves from it? I imagine so. Okay. So what do we have? We have breaker mode and blah blah blah. Uh, we need a direction, and we should do the directions with an enum. These are kind of annoying sometimes, but well, let's do it anyways. And we'll assume north is up and everything. I have a new message. Somebody sent me a message. Hope it's nice. <laughs> All right. Am I the new swag colored kitty? Uh, pff, sure, why not? Bad burger. Why is Russ sometimes popular? What's the upside? Don't know, but I'm learning it. Uh, okay, and direction. So we should have a direction here. Direction, and we'll just use the same names again north, east, west, and south. And we're going to overdo this. We're going to over engineer this problem so that we have proper proper Rust code. And we need to parse this all. What we need is a grid. So we're going to go steal our matrix again. We're going to steal the basic matrix code. Get push set is valid. I keep these things. And we'll see which other ones we need. We may not need them. We have no idea what he does if he goes off the side. But this matrix now, we should convert this to a parametric type, not that I know how. And everything's lowercase, so I'm going to convert this back to lower. No, everything's not lowercase. Rush doesn't appear to make up its mind on his naming convention, so I think ours is going to end up mixed as well. And so these are arrays of cell type, and it has a width and a height. 
And when we create the matrix, new, vex room, vec new, we should change this to cells. The reason they're called rooms is because the first program we made it on, which one was that that had rooms? I don't even remember anymore. Self.cells. And this is a cell type. And this is also a cell type. Cells. That should be fine. And we also have a cell type. Okay, is self remains valid. And we'll stick with that part of it so we have a matrix. Now we have all these states. We're going to learn real rule. <coughs> We're going to read in this value. Can I make this bigger? Good. And where do we read this in? We have each row. I right, had to figure it out. Input the number of lines and columns in the map separated by a space. And they've really given up on parsing this for us automatically. Um, lines and columns. Okay, they add as lines and columns. I just make this weird. Uh, okay, so we're going to have a new matrix, let moot. Uh, Let's call the map, or did we say it's a town? Let's call it the town, and this is a matrix. Matrix new columns kind of lines. They love inverting these values. And that fills up the lines, and this doesn't initialize the vector. It just leaves it basically undefined because we're going to assume we're going to read these in order, and we're going to push them all onto there, and we happen to follow the exact same order as in the map. And so now we can do this. We can say for C in row.chars. We do town dot. I thought I added a push. Yeah, push. Town dot push. And now we have to match C. And this is where we just read the map. Man, I wish I could see two parts of the code at once. We're going to have to map to all of these cell types. So let's copy them down here. We know we have to have all of these. Technically, we don't have a start location. So let's get rid of that. There is no start location for Bender. And do we have another message? Ooh. Swaggy like to talk about Rust. All right. I don't think a new swag can like I say lots of things about Rust. Okay, so the reason we don't have a start is that just where Bender is starting. And we're going to have to track this. And so we have a LUT. We better have a default state for Bender. And import Bender states. We're going to create a new function. Function create, or new as it's called. New is a Bender state. And we just put, I always get this wrong, vendor state, and we say x equals 0, y equals 0. These are really, we're not going to use these, but I think we have to initialize them. I don't know if these are all default initialized or not. And direction, it says he starts going south. Direction equals direction dot south. No semicolon, meaning we return this as a value. So that's good. So Bender has a mutable state. Let mute. Uh, state. State's better than BS. It's a bit clear. Not to mention what BS tends to stand for. Bender state. Bender state. New. Ooh, they're chatting there. Maybe about us. Let's see. Quick. <laughs> Well, let's play the new swag in. These guys are talking about somebody like Rust, so let's pretend we're the new Rust guy. And we'll see where we're at. So we created this bender state, and what happens if we ever encountered this symbol? We have to set the initial bait, so state.x equals, where are we? We should probably track that as well. Oh no, Sasha's talking now. They're talking away. What are they talking about? <laughs> All 
All right, we'll let them talk. <coughs> we'll focus on this game here. Um, you know, let's add a function to this. And we're going to say the current init position in matrix. We can actually add a function where we can return two values, I think. Can we return tuples from these? Current pish position is self. And we're going to send i32, i32. And the current len, L equals, because when we're pushing, we don't have the full size yet. So we're going to read the length off. And then we can return, or not return, let's get the Rustian way where we say, L, this is the Rome, so it's just, I don't know if these are columns here, self.width, I don't know if module is supported, L divided by self.width. And so this function says, where are we right now? I'm hoping, and I assume we can do this in Rust. I don't remember how to do it. I don't remember, I've never done it before. I saw an example where we can say town dot get current pos current push position is what I called it. Current push position. And then we're also going to return cell type dot empty. We didn't mark down empty, did we? It's the most important one, empty. Because there's nothing there. It's, it's a bender right there. And now we do the rest of them. Now we say we got rid of the start. We don't have that. Dollar marks a suicide booth. And I think we just do cell type dot suicide. And this is a hard cell type. Obstacle hard. It says small x or big x. I'm going to copy it because I can't tell from the appearance whether that's small or big. That looks like a big x now. This is a soft obstacle. And so we have, I'm assuming this is going to map to south. This is one of those things you just you make some assumptions. You could be really evil and actually map this a different way. I have no idea why I chose this ordering west. So we have start, we have the suicide, obstacle hard and sauce on the list. We need an inverter. Inverters are marked with I. Cell type dot inverter. It's supposed to be a comma. B is cell type dot beer. And T is a teleporter. Cell type dot teleporter. And we have to. We'll worry about when we get to the teleporter how to find the other teleporter. We know where we're at, and we'll just find the other one then. And then we have a blank one because Rust requires this. We'll just say cell type dot empty. It's unexpected. It's probably some way to fail out of here instead. And so we push all these values in, and now we want to write a function that dumps the matrix. Just so we can see where we are, we might actually need this to implement it later as well. And, you know, let's, uh, I want to just, yeah, let's write a dump function for now. Dump and self. And we're going to use the print air function for each of the lines for... Uh, we're going to need to output this print air again without doing a new line. This is print air line. And this is print air. This is just right. See, this is the type of stuff you mean putting in the library. I don't like that these are macros to begin with, but we're just going to start putting them that way. So we will do for for each row r in zero dot dot self dot height. I just do it x and y x and zero dot self dot width. And now we should print what type we are. 
we should map this back to characters and <clears throat> we can do the exact same thing mapping back to characters map self dot get x comma y and reach line print air line and print nothing and this we're going to print a character and that dumps it and now we have to do the output again So, as Sasha says, this is quite a bit of code to do this. This is my debugging, but that's okay. It's all very straightforward, I think. And I think I have to add cell type in front of all of these. I hope I don't need a default now because there is no possibility for something else. And what do they use empty lines with? Space, there's nothing there, so we can do the same thing. So we actually need the default in the other case. And suicide dollar obstacle hard is that's the hash pound hash. This is an X, it's an S, it's an East. Can you imagine giving this one to somebody in an interview? This is like very long. I mean, expecting you to code it nicely, um, although even coding this quickly would be rough. So we do that, dump, 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 dump. Then we have all these lines, and so right here. And what are we supposed to output? So we output the lines, otherwise we output loop. And this is kind of mean that you have to, you have to decide beforehand whether they looped or not. So it means we're gonna have to push all our states into a list. But I guess that's kind of the point where each state is in a list and we decide what happens with it. Um, it's kind of annoying though with the beard. The X, the fact that X obstacles can be broken is, is really annoying. It really changes that state. It, that, that little difference makes us actually more than a medium. But that's not my concern. So town.dump print nothing. Let's see what errors I have. So we always have errors. <coughs> Let's move this code down again. 56. Unexpected token. These are supposed to be colons, I think. Yes. Let's put these in more lines. We have a small editor here so we can see it. We don't want the lines running too long. Then we can clean it off nicer there. Of course, we totally screwed up the line numbers, so let's just guess where this was. It's 141, probably three lines down now. What we have here means, I don't know what that means. Let's try and make sure I get the right line again. One forty-five. Okay, are we not allowed to have a line in the last one? One oh five, and where's one oh five? I think I have something wrong with the match. So let's see how we do match again. Is there a search on here? Rust match. Where can I find match on here? Match. How did I magically end up at match? I think that I just got lucky. <laughs> that looks like the right thing though. We have match, match. We give it a value and we Stick the stuff out. Aha! Uh -huh. We use double colons for that name. Okay. It's following kind of the C convention, I guess, here, where dots refer to instances and and double colons refer to static. I think it's needless syntax, but we'll just keep adding it. Try to reserve judgment for now. Nah, we're not gonna do that. But we'll say not so much. 
Now we have 145. <clears throat> and if anybody are wondering why I keep scrolling down is because the editor here is broken with Rust. Every time it gets an error, it parses it incorrectly and jumps back up to line zero. So I have to scroll back down every single time. There should be no comma there. Direction.south, so line 59. So that's everywhere we use that. I was just kind of guessing at the dots. So line 145. Cell type empty is the one we missed. Let's see if we actually get something compiled. Nope. All right, this is not surprising. So line 80 is, is one we just made a mistake on, self. And line 144 is the one we knew we'd have problems with is this. Um, I don't know how to do this. Left time of expression not valid. Let's get back to that. Let's just say for now the temporary equals town.current push position state.x equals q.0 state.y equals q.1. I thought there was some syntax to do this. I'm not sure. So to do syntax, let's find out. Oh, I hate this part again. 81. This is actually stupid. I mean, modulos should be well defined for negatives. Why do they make it only for eye size? So we have to do this as I32. We'll just totally break it there. And L is, we'll say as I32 just to. Keep its typing happy. All right, so I don't know the precedence of as here. So the precedence of as must be stronger than the brackets. It is. Okay, so 137. We don't actually use the I. So I apparently put an underscore on it and ignore it. And line 89. I don't want to move it. Can I take a copy of it? Clone. Let's try that. Town.push. Or is it borrowed as... All right, this is one of the things that also, I think I'm getting a lot annoyed. We came with the last shows. You can't actually do town.push if we can use town inside of it. So you have to say let uh, cell type equal match. And then town.push cell type. They're extremely strict on this stuff. I'm not clear yet on why. And clone, clone. So enums. How are you cloning enum? Rust. Enum. Let's go back to enum. Clone. No. How do you copy an enum value? Rust. Copy enum value. <coughs> My trusty Rust people aren't here watching today, I guess, so... <laughs> Let's do that. I don't know what that really means, but let's stick it on our enum. Stick it on all the enums. I don't know why that worked, but we're okay. Um, so our first graph, let's check it if we actually input it correctly. Simple moves. Yes, we have the correctly. He's going to be in the right location. So we, we are parsing that correctly at least. 
Let's check another one that's a little bit more complicated to see for parsing everything in. This one has obstacles. Let's see one that has everything. Wow, that's ridiculous. Okay, so this one has a bit of everything. So let's check that one. We're obviously not going to pass it. I just want to see how we parse it. Okay, let's see if we parse this correctly down to 11. Other than the at, which we know is not there, do, 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 do. we've parsed this all correctly. So we've got our parsing done. Now we're actually going to make Blender move. And <clears throat> since we have to detect loops, we know there's going to be loops in here to start with. No, let's do, let's do the one without loops first of all. Let's see what happens. Bender starts in an empty square, so we know it's okay to do. And, oh, something that context refreshed. It loaded back to general. Let's see if they're still talking about Snappy Guy. All right, whatever. So in a state machine, we have this state for Bender. And we're gonna walk them through. And what we're going to do now so we're going to make a function that takes both of them and produces a new state. And we're going to take the step of this, <clears throat> and it takes the current bender state, and it takes a reference to it, not a mutable reference. We're not going to we're not going to copy the mutable reference, and it also takes the. I guess this is going to be. I just we're put the ands state. It's going to take a reference to the matrix, and we're not going to make it mutable now, even though we know we have to at some point. We know the first one's going to be okay, and this is the town. And this is going to return a new vendor state. And the first thing we'll do is clone the vendor state equals state.clone. Assuming that works, and we're going to see if that actually clone works. No, of course not. Matrix, no, okay, I got the, got the typing wrong. Mismatch types, step, I don't know what they're asking for. Um, let's just hope it was that second part of it screwing it up. Expected struct bender state found reference. That's weird. Why? I'm going to put this right at the bottom as well because the editor's annoying, then we can get to it a lot quicker. And I don't understand the error message found type and bleh. And maybe it's supposed to be over here. Okay, now we're at. These error messages are so weird sometimes. Okay, I think I, I think I understand now. It's because we're not actually returning it. So in the end, we should be returning vendor state. And found reference. Expected struct vendor state found reference. I don't actually get this now. Um, I don't want a reference. I want a copy. I don't know how to do this now. How do I return this copy? I'm going to forward it. Mutable estate clone. How do I return a value? I thought I returned values before, but it's just not working. Expected type, found type. Why is this a reference? Well, let's just dereference it then. Cannot move out of board context. I don't understand this one. Oh. 
I need a I need a Rust export here. Unfortunately, what's wrong with this? We take a copy of it, and let's say this is Bender State. Let's make, not make it a reference. I really don't understand this sometimes. Come on! How on earth do you copy a value? Rust clone. Clone by example looks good. Clone. Point to self, that's fine. Do we just dereference it and hope for a copy? Let's just take off the states. I don't know. I really don't know. No, that's not helping either. This is this is kind of annoying. Um, this is a very basic operation. I don't know how to do it. Uh, all I want to do is copy this value states. Clone. I want a clone. Yes, I want a clone. Let's see if there's some other reference that's useful for clone. Um, this moves, moves, let clone pair. Okay, I really need a Rust expert. I really want to clone this thing. I know I want to clone this thing. But I have to return it as well. Let's put the return statement and don't use that silliness. Expected struct bender state found reference. I don't care what you found, just return it. It's supposed to move it. How do I move stuff? reference to move or something. Well, let's try these first. So this has clone and copy. Does that help us anything at all? Direction does not equal copy. Okay. Copy. Cell type is going to be copy as well. Okay, so that's it. You always have to... And I actually asked this on Twitter today. I was, get, I was mad at C++ because... I had an error where it was using a copy constructor on intended. I guess this is the one of the advantages of Rust, and I actually do kind of agree with this. Is don't have copy and clone by default. Let's just actually require them, and I just have to know to add that. And I wonder if I actually need this state dot clone here, or copying is enough. I don't care. We'll just leave it clone for now. Okay, now we have the state, and we have to figure out where we are. And now we're just going to say match town.get. We can just take, we take the clone state too, bs.x, bs.y. And for each thing we're in, we're just going to do something. So we're going to copy those rules again. And we're going to assume. That this is based on. Actually, this is really hard to say. What what should we step to? If he ends up on it, we're going to say step both implements the move, and moves him. 
It's a bit tricky to say. It's, it's, it, there's, two, there's two distinct operations happening here. We land on a square and then we move. And I'm just going to implement them both as one because I think it works out because the space he starts in is always empty, so there'll be nothing there ever. So the empty one is simply going to be doing nothing. And the suicide one, this will be doing something. And this is actually when we're done. Curious as to what we do here because he shouldn't move. We hit the suicide booth, we're done. So let's add another state value. Bender state dead. It's bool. Dead is false. And we'll say when he hits the suicide booth, the copied state dot dead equals true. And we're going to break out of whatever return we do. In obstacle hard, we're going to have to change directions. And we can actually do this. We can say change direction on vendor state. And we're going to let it mutate that one. And this is going to be the exact same change to for now until we implement the breaker mode and mute BS. If we encounter south, then we say BS dot direction equals direction south. So each square, we're simply mapping what happens on those squares. East. Okay, my crowd's a bit quiet today. If anybody wants to say something, feel free. Distract me a bit from this repeated typing. <laughs> uh, north. And the inverter, the inverter toggles the inverter. So inverter, what do we call this thing? Invert, inverted equals not BS inverted. And beer turns them on and off in a breaker mode. Breaker mode equals not BS dot breaker. And teleporter. Teleports him. That's fine. Teleports him. And change direction is fine. Obstacle hard. He can't be on an obstacle hard. Um, bad. Um, bad. I don't know what to do there. We actually hit an air condition if we ever get that. He can't be on that. In teleporter, we're going to have to implement print error line. Teleporter. Let's actually do that up here as well. Print line. Print error line on obstacle, which is bad. So now we have to move and we're going to check the states and we're going to check basically the obstacles and for each direction we're going to say I'm wondering if maybe we shouldn't make a little point class as well it says nothing about a moving off the map so I'm going to assume it doesn't happen so we're just going to ignore that which means we switch the directions <coughs> And we want to find out in which direction he can move. So what do we want to do? We want to, I'm just trying to think if we model a point or not. Because I don't know how to do multiple return types again. You notice that issue we had with the multiple return types right here. Let's actually look that up. Let's see if we can have rust multiple returns. Return tuple. And there should be a way we can just break this let. Let works. Um, well, it's not really want. It doesn't show me the way I want. It's bigger. I don't know how to break up the tuple. 
rust break up tuple. I don't have a clear way with a let rule, it looks like we can actually do multiple assignments. The reason I'm looking at this now is because if I can't simply do multiple return types, I'm going to have to use a point type. Rust assign tuple to, whoops, tuple to multiple values. Multiple values, that's helpful. Somebody must answer my other question. I won't look at that now. That's a match. I don't want a match. I want a something interesting there. We don't know the assignments. Nobody's showing us the assignments. This is not Rust. Um, let me guess. Let me see if we can just do it this way. Can I take this off? No, you can't do that. This is a... Uh... Let's fix the other stuff now that we have it. Print airline. Print airline. Let's print airline. And I really want to know how to do this bit here. Where does that go? Damn this editor. I really want to know how to break up a tuple. Rust assign tuple. Come on, there's got to be a syntax of this out here. Can I destructure a tuple? That's what I'd like to know. No. That sucks. Can you seriously not do that? Anyway, that's... <coughs> if your language has tuples, it seems like kind of a fundamental feature. Um... And some people don't like it. Yeah, that's killer cup. That's what I'm looking for. It that's uh, I I had that before. I had this, and it doesn't compile. Is it supposed to? Where did it go again? Right here. So it's this line right here. And I'm really hoping this works, and it doesn't. It doesn't appear, doesn't appear to work, and I, I, I had to use this other syntax instead, and I'm hoping I don't have to. If you know how to do that. Yeah, but I don't want to let, because I already have these variables. Because I'm not introducing new variables. These are existing variables. State.x and state.y are existing variables. Right, so that let introduces a new one if I understand, or can let be used for that. And like if you add let, it's probably just gonna whine about that. There's, there's yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not expecting that. So if nobody knows This makes tuples a bit harder to work with, makes them unfriendly. Okay. Then we're gonna have to do one thing the wrong way. Yeah, that, that kind of sucks, but let's just move on from that. I stated my opinion on it, and return BS. Because this makes it here, when I want to change the directions, this makes packing these tuples together a bit differently. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make Bender's position a tuple instead.
and then we'll play with this as a compound tuple type. And we should probably give this a name. Yeah, I saw that. The let works. And it's weird that let works and the other one doesn't work. It's just kind of weird. Uh, we should probably give this. Can we give a tuple a name? I don't want to create a struct, but can I just give a tuple a name? Tuple, tuple, tuple. I want to name a tuple. No. I. Ah, there are ducks in ring. Come on. Tuple. Is there a way to name a tuple? Let's find out. Rust. Name tuple. Struct. Okay, so it is still struct. Struct point. I don't know what we'll call it. What we'll call it point for the normal case. We don't know what the naming convention is. It seems to be inconsistent. Is this a structure or a tuple? Does it have derive and clone and copy automatically? Point. I can say point. Let's see if those are compatible. So now we can say state.position equals town push current position. Get rid of that. Let's see what errors we made. They didn't like that. Forty-eight. He doesn't like this. <laughs> oh, so I can't have names. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna use that excuse too. I'm um, I'm actually really good at Rust before eleven p.m. Just like Killer Cup. It's just after eleven p.m. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a joke. <laughs> okay. So we still have to do the clone and copy on it. So we really saved nothing by making this a tuple. I don't know. Type to point is a pipe the pwn type. So how do I create this type now? Um 62. Does that work now? Sure. <laughs> Alright, that's fair enough. Start drinking at 8. It might be hard to do rust later. Create the point there. And 182. BS.position.zero bs.position.y and actually I'm just going to make the town accept a point as well I hope can we overload I think I've asked this before but is overloading possible I'm going to find out position as a point I guess this is probably a reference reference to a point or a copy of a point or I really don't care, it's a point. No overloading, seriously. Well then let's get rid of this one, everybody has to use a point. One one one. That makes convenient functions really hard, and it's one of the reasons I like overloading. Especially if you're strictly typed, there's actually no danger in overloading. It's when you're, it's when you're loosely typed that overloading is actually the biggest problem, and that's why languages like Python can't offer overloading because they're loosely typed. Same with JavaScript. With very strict languages like what Rust looks like, I don't see an issue with allowing overloading. Especially in cases like this, you'd want to offer different ways to provide 
the exact same function just for convenience. Is that the actual convention that it's a, well that's why I'm confused with is the lowercase, that some were lowercase and the rest were, I couldn't figure out what was uppercase and what was lowercase. And, but you're saying all types are uppercase? If that's the case, I can go with it. Because we have namespaces are lowercase and, but if the types are all uppercase, I can convert to that. I just wasn't sure what the convention was because our, all the primitive primitives are lowercase. But let's, let's get this first one solved and we can change that later, but I would definitely like to stick with the convention. I was just confused. Snake. It's really used to use uh, underscores for values in camel case. I, it's a weird mixture, but it's, I can just go with that. That's fine. But we'll fix that after. Okay, so now we have that. We return position. And we're going to check all the positions. Now we got to go back to the code here and decide when he's going down. When he hits an obstacle, this is really weird. When he hits an obstacle, he always goes south, east, northwest first. It doesn't matter which direction he was going. We just pick the next one based on this list. And so what we want to do is we want to check if he can go that direction. And we want to know what is his next position. And we'll say next position is get next position. From bender states. Function get next position. And BS bender state, <clears throat> and it's going to return a point. And we'll do a switch on this. We'll do a, we can just match return the point directly. Match BS dot direction, direction north becomes point BS dot position zero BS dot position. So lower position one minus one. And I guess it's a comma. Direction east is going to be point BS position at zero plus one, BS dot position point one. Direction west BS dot position at zero minus one. BS dot position one. South point BS dot position. Yeah, now I'm wishing I would have given these names because I hate the zero and one. BS dot position dot one plus one south goes south. And there is no, this should be the result. There should be no default. And let's just do this first. We're going to say the cell if town dot get next position can we add can we add functions for actually let's see let's just do is obstacle I think this is something we might want to do a trait for if it's an obstacle we're gonna check here we're gonna go somewhere else if it's an obstacle then we have to circle through the directions and we're going to say for direction in, can we just create an inline list of stuff? Let's find out. Direction south, direction east, direction north, direction west. And say BS dot direction equals D. We're going to assign the direction. We could do this mutating it. And we're going to say if it's not an obstacle, if not is obstacle town dot get. 
let's say get next position. Actually, we need the position. Let's just say the position. No, no, that's bad. Yeah, next position, next position. Else BS dot position equals next position. Okay, we're saying if the town, if it's not an obstacle, the next position, then BS position equals get next. I should do a let here as well. Let's next position equal get next position. These are probably references. Next position. Next position, and we're going to break out of this loop once we found one that's not that. And he's already stepped. This steps as well. So this does the stepping, not this. It's actually going to step to the next position, and then we return it. So this does all of that. All we need to do now is step through the town. And we're going to do for each step, we have to write out what happens. What, what do we write out? We write out which way he goes, and that's fine then. So we're going to say just while loop, or just loop continuously for now. And we'll say step and so the new state equals, this is the more functional approach. I'm not mutating state. I'm going to return the new one. And there's a good reason for this that we'll do later. And town. So we step and he changed directions. No, he changed directions first. Okay. Does it have to be and? Why do I need the and there? Just trying to know. Oh, now we have to map this again. We're going to do a print line. We want to print the direction he's going. Match state dot direction. And if you're wondering, we have a lot of duplication here when you're dealing with state machines. That's just the nature of state machines. That's just the nature of mapping back and forth between values. There's not a lot we can actually do with that. Unless what we do is we map this direction south to actually have the value south, but that's kind of silly. I've never liked things that do this. So this one's taking a lot longer than I had hoped, but it's just a lot of typing here. North is gonna go north. And then we're gonna say if state.dead, we break out and we done. We're done that guy, he's done then. So we try this first one, see what happens. Beyond, you know, of course, of course, mistakes. Oh, yeah, is obstacle we need first? Is this cell type? equals cell type dot soft obstacle. Okay, so we have bender there. Yes, direction is going direction, changing direction. Is obstacle this spell it wrong? Is obstacle? Expected struck bender state, get next position. <clears throat> All right, so we got this one wrong here. I don't know what that position is. I can take a copy of that, copy of that. And why is this a reference? Can I get rid of that? Does that actually reference? Can I do it that way or? All right, 
right, we'll just do it this way. I still don't quite understand these things all the time. 245, BS direction, that's fine. 254. I called them obstacle hard and soft. I got the names wrong. Obstacle hard. Obstacle soft. Cannot be applied. Uh, interesting. This is something new. Why can I not do equals equals on an enum? The matches work, but the equals equals don't. We can do it this way, match CT. I don't know if this is the correct way or I should actually do some sort of uh, overloading of the thing. And this just comes to match. We don't even put the return type. I think that's the Rustacean way. Whoops. Actually it looks a bit smaller too. All right, so we keep going south, south, east, east, and we don't die. <laughs> then we go north, north, south, south, north, north, south, south. Okay. Why did we not hit that obstacle? Why have we not hit the obstacle there? We should have been dead. State dot dead break. Step down, step down, step down, step down. We step and we break and he dies. Okay. We're actually going to have to do this in two steps, I think. We're going to read the cell and step. Because what's happening is he's getting off that cell before it actually triggers and. Maybe we should do this afterwards, actually. We do the step first because we know his first step is safe, and then we check the conditions on it. I think that's more correct. It was, well, it's still failing. We still do the same thing. So it's east, east. It's a BS position, is next position. And. Let's do a print line here to see a print error line. BS.position and BS.direction and town.get BS.position. We're probably going to need some debug things to print this out. We'll learn some Rust for that too. And come on. How can we make a point displayable? There's something about debug. Um, what do we say for debug? Debug output rust struct. Derive debug. Let's let it debug itself. And we just put that in all of our ones up here. Can I just say this in debug in all of them? Thank you. Let's do it on all of them. Let it expand. <laughs> okay. Point one, two. He's one, two. And he went south. It's fine. And where is one, two? Empty, empty. Suicide. So we hit suicide here. This is correct. 
We landed on suicide right here. We hit BS dead and we turned BS. This return is not doing anything, is it? But we don't need this return anymore. We can just say BS is dead because it does this. Now I have to figure out why is this BS dead not printing out here. Print line, error line, dying. Print error line. Okay. Thanks to RFC 1149 for the explanation. Why did you choose the name RFC 1149? Which RFC is that? Um, this is weird. It doesn't get to here. Town get clearly writes out suicide. Yet this match statement doesn't get to suicide. Why not? Why is this match statement not doing what we want? Does it get to any of them? Print airline empty. Okay, there's something I don't get here. Are we returning a long value? No. Okay, I, I clearly don't understand something here. Something's wrong, very, very wrong. Town not get position. So let's say town is uh, the square equals town dot get bs dot position. Sq. I don't know because if we look at my debug, my debug is able to dump them, but it puts cell type on all of them. Do I maybe need to put cell type and there's something weird down here if I don't say cell type? I'm going to try this just to rule this out. All right. I don't understand this. This seems weird. What was it doing without cell type there? Why is it accepting this? and doing nothing. I'm going to put a 2D there because I'm going to add some less later. Why does this not work without cell type but no compiler error? That seems a little bit odd and But I don't have a variable named that. There is no variable named empty. So it should have given an error because I can't find a symbol named empty. Okay, so that one works, which we expected. And we can get rid of this print line that, print line that. And so we have the basic case. The simple obstacles probably also work. Yeah, obstacles also work. And let's try priorities. Priorities also work. No, I, I'm not suppressing any warnings. In fact, you recall we get warnings on unused macros, so it always reports if I don't use a macro. 
Um, so I'm not suppressing anything by default, and I'd assume that I'd, I, I would assume that if we're outputting unused macro, that we have most warnings turned on. That one works. Let's get to the one where it doesn't work. Breaker mode is the one that's going to fail. Oh, path modifier failed as well. So let's check that one out. What is path modifier? And hey, that happens to be the one in the test. No. Where is he starting at? He's starting at at. So he goes south. I think he's starting at the wrong position. Path modifier at. We only go south once. Which is an issue. Then he goes east. Okay, why is he going south only once? We step. Good, 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 good. good. And we step. Okay, we're going to break this up. This actually makes sense. We're going to break this up. And then we're going to say state equals land and state and town. Because I think this clearly has to be done in two steps. And just BS this here. Function land state. Matrix So we're gonna break this up because we clearly need to say which direction he went Before we figure out where he landed because he clearly goes that direction and then he commits suicide Which is what makes that one work let's check the other ones again they should still work Breaker mode is gonna fail we know that and inverter is going to fail, teleporters. Now we have to handle these other ones. We have to handle uh, breaker mode. Breaker mode is going to be a bit of an issue. So let's do inverter first. Inverter. This happens to be this one, bender state here. And if bs.inverted. No, 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 that's correct, that's kind of, where, where is he, what am I checking that? This is going to get messy here, because I don't know how to do this, we're going to say if, if bs.inverted, then we return this, how much can I stick on another line? Alright, then we're going to say, in directions, else directions, and we're going to try and take this off here. I'm going to say in directions equals this. Let directions, that was directions. Inverse directions equals this now. What does inverted mean again then? West, north, east. Okay. Probably reverse this somehow. All right, can't do that. So, do we do this? Yeah. Man, this editor gets annoying. All right, so inverted directions works, that's fine. And all we did is we invert the directions, it checks, that should be okay. 
Teleport we don't have. What does Broken Wall do? I guess this is probably a loop. We have to check loops together. Loop, 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 multiple loops. She likes to check broken walls, see why it fails. He's here. He goes down, he gets a beer. Goes south, breaks this, he gets a beer. Then he goes this way. I think this is a loop. No, in any case, it's beer. We're not doing beer. So let's go to the first breaker mode. And if we have... Is obstacle town get next position? And we're going to give it the state as well. What is the what is the state of it? So it can decide is obstacle and BS. And is obstacle is going to have the state now as well because we want to know vendor state. And we're going to put two things here. If obstacle hard, it returns true. In obstacle soft, we now return vendor state dot breaker mode. And breaker mode says, look, it's broken. We're not there. And now we need to do, we need to break it. If you land on a soft obstacle, we destroy it. Now this is what's really weird is now we actually need a mutable town matrix because we're actually gonna break something now. Town dot set. BS dot position and we want to say cell type empty. So where do we go for land? This search sucks. <laughs> it responds too slowly. Okay. Alright, we have did you mean Bender State 265? Yes, I did. Set, let's find set. And this is going to take a point. Position is a point. It's a cell type. Position dot one. Position dot zero. Okay, in the breaker mode, what should we have done? We should have started somewhere else. Um, so we broke something incorrectly. We should probably mark where he's at. Let's do that in the dump mode. <clears throat> I'm going to say bender position. So bender position is going to be a point. BP, can we do this? No, it doesn't matter. BP.x equals x and BP.y equals y. No, sorry. 1 and 0. Then we're going to print error at, that's where he's at, and continue. And what do we call dump? Go away. Dump, dump, dump. I think I'm going to look into using an external editor because this is really getting kind of annoying. Yes, dot position. Yes, I did. 1, 1, 12. Of course, it wouldn't be so bad using this if the... Uh, I'm going to keep jumping around on us. 175. Because we have state, state dot position. So 
So we have an at, and we go south. I think I forgot to turn breaker mode on. No, breaker mode is on. Why did we not keep, why did we go east then? Why did we go east? We somehow didn't break through the wall. We had a step. Get next position, I think is fine. We've proven that from the other tests. Land, he's on. Beer, let's print airline. Breaker. Make sure we get there. <clears throat> let's figure out the what happened though. So we went down. If it is an obstacle, it shouldn't have been an obstacle though, because he has a state. Soft BS breaker. Oh, that's why. This is supposed to be inverse. If we're in breaker mode, it's not an obstacle. There we go. So now he breaks through it at the end. That's fine. And as for curiosity, let's see how it looks like when we've broken everything. Town.dump. We'll see where he is in the end, just for fun. All right, and he didn't break much. He broke through that wall and through those two and got to the end and killed himself. Let's check the other ones still work. Oh, they should work fine, okay. And then we check the broken wall. And that one also works now. So we've broken through the wall and we find the ends. And we're still missing teleporting and looping. Okay, so there's teleporters. So what we have to do is teleporting and looping still. And teleporters should be okay. Um, we just need to find the other teleporter. We haven't tracked the teleporter's position yet, and we can simply look for it when we need it. So let's get rid of this air teleporter, and we have to find the teleporters. And do we want to do this, or let's just keep a list of them. Where can we keep a list of the teleporters? Um, I don't want to put it in the matrices. Ah, no, let's just do find. We're going to do a find, and let's make it simple, find teleporter. We're going to make it very explicit. And we say, and self, and we're going to say, not, not here as a point, but not this one. And then it's going to return a point. And we're going to go through all of these, and I'm just going to do a simple loop without using the iterator we have. And I'd like to actually look up iterators in, uh, in Rust. I'd like to know how to wrap this up in an iterator. We did a callback function before, but it was a bit messy, so I'd rather have an iterator for it. And if not here dot x equals x, or, oh yeah, and not here dot y equals y, then continue if we're on the place we want to continue. If get self dot get point x comma y equals cell type. Did I say teleporter or teleport? Teleporter. Teleporter. Then we return point x comma y. Um. I don't know, let's just return point zero comma zero. It's not supposed to get here. Unreachable, unless input broken. I haven't learned about things like panic or whatever it's called in Rust to say we're in a bad situation. And so now we can simply say bs dot position equals town dot, oh, what do I call it? I forgot the name of the function. Um, find teleporter. At BS position. So teleport should work now. Except we have that wrong again. 121, print airline. I keep, I should keep naming consistently this. 
and errors. Did you mean zero? Yes, I did mean zero. Um, I really meant X, but we didn't call them that, so we're going to stick with that. Binary. Uh, how do I compare if this is it? Now I can't see. Can I just derive from partial equality? Apparently, yes. Okay, good. So we derive from that. We have those ones. We're missing a loop. All together should work, but our loop is going to fail. Okay, now what we have to do in the loop and what makes the loop difficult is going to be the broken walls because when a wall breaks it changes the state of the map so we're going to go through and check we're going to keep a history of all the states it is and this is why I was keeping copies of all these states because we want to have a history of it all and so right now we're just going to create a new vector let mutable history vector of bender states new in history dot push state <clears throat> and so the basic loop we're going to assume that multiple loops that's fine doesn't matter how can there be multiple loops whatever the only way we can check that we've been in the same place before is by checking the history And this is the part that really sucks, is you're supposed to output loop, if you're in a loop, before you've written anything. So all of this stuff here, we're going to have to output beforehand. So that's fine. So we're going to move this all out, and we're going to say for h in history, because these are all the steps. And this is where it gets a little bit weird. And say, which way did he step? Then we push the history based on that new step. And then in history, we're gonna do match dot h dot dir. And let's see if these first ones still work. Because we're deferring the writing of the history. Okay, I think the deferral is still working. And loop's going to fail. Loop's just going to run forever. Okay, so what we have to do now is we have to check. Is our new history, is our new state in the same as the old state? And this gets a little bit complicated. Um, because we have these variable states, it's going to land here, and we want to have the state here is it here as well after we've landed have we already been here let's check if we've already been in this state yes if we have this state already state and we're going to give it a history And if we do have this state, we're going to clear the history and print line loop. But we have to write have state now, and it takes a vest. It's going to borrow this. Have history. I 
Fender State. History is also an N vector. It's the bool. And we're going to look through all of these now. For Q in history, or H in history is probably better. H in history. If BS equals H, return true. I don't know if that equality is going to work. Let's find out. Not found in this scope. Have history. Actually, yeah, have history is nice. Have state. Have history. History dot clear. Should be state. We can take rep all the states. Okay. Um, state can also have partial equality, I guess. It's going to check every single one of those fields, I hope. And this is probably going to require it here as well. Still have an error. Point doesn't have a partial equality, so we add it to there as well. And we're not finding the old states. Oh, well. <laughs> we found it, but we failed to break out of the loop. Break. That makes more sense. So we've broken out. So let's play all the test cases, see what happens. These ones evaluate quite slowly. Okay, so multiple loop we broke, something broke here, and I think I know exactly what they're testing here. What they're doing here is that whenever you break a wall, you're going to reach the same state again. So what we're going to have is a version and I32. I'm going to start this version at zero. Because what if you if you if you hit the same location but you've broken a wall in the meantime, you're technically not in the same loop. You could be doing something, you could be you could have a different result. So what happens is when we break a wall, we're actually going to change the state version plus equals one. We're going to change the state. We're now in a different state. So whatever state we were in before, we have new states now. And they do not match those old states. So if we try it again. Okay, and that fixes that there. And I hope you understand what it is there is because when you break a wall, you might end up in the exact same position, but you don't it doesn't have the same result. Therefore you have to increment the version and say this state's technically different, it's not the same state because the board has changed. If you wanted to pass the history around, you could actually clear the history at this point. But I'm not passing the history in here, so I'm not clearing it. That solves our problem, I think. Let's just test them all again. And this is a fairly lengthy bit of code. As Sasha said in the beginning, this is fairly lengthy. And I don't see a lot of ways to reduce this. This is like a lot of setup. We have a lot of enums. We have a lot of this code. We have this matrix type here. I wish we had a parametric type right now, but we don't. The output took a bit. And we did a bit new Rust stuff here. So this is quite a bit of the features of Rust all combined together. So I'm actually going to copy this one out because we're going to use this one again, I think. And challenges, we're going to say vendor.rs. And I'm going to patch this up maybe and we'll come back to it and we can add better things to it. Let's see if the submission works. So it's a very slow one and we reached level 10, that's great. I don't want to tweet this one because I think I'm done for the day. That was very long. I'm fine with that. And I didn't love this one. I only kind of liked it because this is a lot of work. And for a medium one, it's not quite sure how it works, if it's really that level. 
and we got three new achievements. We're a rust addict now, which is, I guess so, at this point we're a rust addict. And that was relatively straightforward to fix. And we're so far. I think that's it for today. I mean, I'm kind of exhausted from the other two days already. This week we did fairly long, and we're already an hour and 45 minutes, so we did quite long. We got the Bender one done. That was the only one we tried. I don't want to go back to the easy one right now. We could do it another time. What was the problem? I can't remember the problem was with it. Uh, weird stuff we'd have to check, but okay. I'll come back again. I don't do it during the week until Thursday again. Probably Thursday, maybe not. If not Thursday, then I'll do Friday. So two or three times a week between Thursday and Sunday, probably starting at 11. If I can try, I'll start at 10. If it's a bit earlier, that'd be even better. Otherwise, I'll come back this time. And I, I, I thank you very much for watching the show again. And it was fun doing this. I learned a little bit more Rust. We're building our little library of code. I like it. Again, turn in, tune in tomorrow when I do Fuse animations and apps again on Wednesday as well and of course on Friday I'll be doing algorithms again and please do support me by following me subscribing me and if you want to help me buy some new equipment like drawing on the screen a tablet or something or a less squeaky chair please follow me on patreon as well otherwise thank you and good night and that's it for me today